you guys need any cards, packs, sleeves, anything of that nature, shop on TCG Player using my affiliate link in the description. You hear a lot in Yu-Gi-Oh! about engines, about, oh, I, I play this engine in this deck, I play that engine in that deck, so I figured I'd make a video going over a bunch of the engines from Edison format. Um, now, this isn't meant to be like even near a comprehensive list, although I was kind of stringent with my definition of engine for the sake of this video. So basically we're referring to like some set of cards that is like splashable and have good interactions but aren't really a comprehensive strategy. So for example, like flambells or frogs, I kind of left off because if you play them, they just sort of dominate your strategy to the point that like you're just playing a frog deck. It's not really an, it's not really a frog engine. I mean, maybe if you if you stretch the definition, you could call it that, but I don't really consider that to be an engine. Whereas if we pick a random thing on this list, like Lone Fire Blossom, yeah, something could be a plant deck, but you could also just play like Lone Fire in a lot of decks, you know. Um, so that's kind of where we're coming at um, this video from. Like, like I said, there may be things that I left off, that, or maybe there's things you're thinking of that I thought about but just chose to exclude because I decided they didn't count as an engine. So just like. Don't get mad if you feel like there's uh there's something well your your favorite engine is missing from the list or something. You know, I don't know, I don't know. Whatever, let's just get into it. We've got four categories here. We've got the the highest category. We're rating them on on two like spectrums, which is just like how what utility the cards provide and like how good they are, sort of inherently, and then also how splashable they are, which is like kind of a it makes sense as a measure of good engine because an engine is inherently something that's supposed to be splashable in multiple decks. So like how generic is it? How many different sort of things can you throw it in and try to make it work? And then just how good are the cards? So we're starting off with Vayu Turbo here. Now this is the example of an engine that I think is extremely strong but not all that splashable. It barely even made the list. I, it only, like, just at the end occurred to me that it's like, well, technically, you play this in Vayu Turbo, then also you can play it in Blackwing Hybrid, and then maybe you can play some crazy Light Sworn thing with it, so I guess it's kind of an engine rather than just one deck. Like, 90% of the Vayu stuff that goes on in this form is just one deck that looks exactly identical, but um, I guess you can say, like, the Vayu pieces plus Greffer or something plus, plus Arma makes a coherent engine. So we're going to throw this up in the orange tier just because it is so good. It is so good. So like it, it just has to be, um, you know, it has to be up here because like it is strong. There's no, there's no denying it's super, super strong. Even if it's splashability rating is like super low. Um, it definitely meets like the one or the other level that it needs to be to be up in this sort of secondary tier. Um, so yeah, that's Vayu Turbo. We got the Neospatian engine here. This one is interesting. I feel like it's super underrated. It's like hyper splashable, right? It's hyper splashable, and uh, as as been, has been evidenced by my uh, my series on YouTube where I've played like ten different decks. With the Neospatian engine, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with the Spatian engine, and it is it is not as strong as Vayu Turbo. Like for sure, it's not as strong, but it isn't as weak as a lot of the other engines on in this uh, tier list are going to be either. It's kind of like mid in terms of its power, and then like really high in terms of its splashability. So I think within this tier of either splashable or strong, I'm going to put it above Vayu Turbo just because like Vayu is like all really high in one. And then like kind of garbage in the other category whereas this one is just kind of eh in one category but it's super high in the other category so i think it should mathematically come out to be above value turbo in terms of where it rates as an engine i i just i really think the neospatian engine is underrated in general like if you think about the cards that sort of are adjacent to this engine where it's like you play armonite you play rhoda you play foolish burial you play allure of darkness you play dad and chaos sork these are all very good cards that are very enabled by this engine and can be played in a lot of different things so i think i think spatian is deserved to be somewhere relatively high uh diva this is super small but super powerful and also super splashable so i think we've got our first entry here into s tier i mean this engine is generally just like four cards or something you just play the divas and the gilman um i guess you could also make it even smaller and just play diva by itself although it's debatable whether that even qualifies as an engine anymore if it's just one card um, but you know, you can also play the five that Diva Hero Beat plays. Maybe Diva Hero Beat, I've mentioned several times, should just go to like six and play Triple Gilman. <laughs> I think it would be funny. But 
Uh, maybe that's not the way to go. Um, either way, I mean, it's a one-card synchro play. You can get out two tuners and do some crazy combos. Um, it's just like... I think Diva is like the first card like this, actually, that I can think of, where it's just like a Stratos, but it's special summons from the deck. Like, this was such a crazy direction of power creep that the game took. There's a lot more monsters like this now, but it's stuff like... And then Tour Guide later on, like a continuation of this. Like, really crazy sort of card design. And like I said, it's super tight, super generic, can play it in a lot of different decks, and then insanely powerful as well. So definitely going to be up in that top tier. Um, all right, Gallus. So this represents, like, the Monster Mash. I don't know if it's really even fair to call this an engine, but I, I needed more entries on the list because I was disqualifying too many things. Um, so it's just, like, playing three of this plus three, uh, what, what, what is it? Witch of the Black Rose in Monster Mash decks, I guess. This one's going in neither Splashable nor Strong. It's not quite just awful. Like, uh, I think you could see kind of what's probably going to end up in just awful, but... I mean, the cards are good, but they're not really that good. Like, they're not good enough to be a top-tier deck in the way Vayu is. Um, they're not really... And then, like, they're they're very, very, like, xenophobic, too, because you just have to play this, like, no-spell-trap strategy, which is, like, a super a, a super huge handicap um, in Edison format, of course, because um, spell traps are pretty important and pretty good, it turns out. So I think... Unfortunately for us Monster Match enjoyers, it's going to have to go down in the sad third tier of neither Splashable nor Strong. All right, now we've got Weladad. Um, so this is going to be like Krebons plus Teleport plus Powerwell. Uh, let me think about this one. This one is like sort of Splashable, but maybe not to the extent of like these two. And it's also pretty strong. <laughs> but maybe not to the extent of, like, these two. But it is, like, relatively high in both, I would say. There are, like, different directions you can take Weladad. I mean, maybe it's not that splashable. Mm, it's either here or, like, down here. I don't know. I, I might have to think about it. Let's come back to Krabons. I, I, I really want to think on that one because I'm not sure... Uh, I'll just I'll just I'll just do it last or or second to last or something. Lone Fire. This one is splashable but not strong. I know I'm gonna get some some hate from the plant enjoyers, but I just really hate like Lone Fire Titanial. I'm just like not a fan of it at all. Like the issue is, not only is Titanial a brick, but if you draw Titanial, your Lone Fire is turned into bricks. And then it's like if you're gonna play this, you really need to be playing like Avarice or something too. So I. It just feels like, like it's just, and then and Titanial, like 90% of the time, just trades one for one anyway, so it's just like, is this even worth it? I feel like Titanial's super overrated in, in the current meta, it like never, like, sometimes it wins games and it's like really cool and wow, Titanial's so strong, Titanial's a freaking unit, but then most of the times Titanial is just like, I summon Titanio and it gets bottomless, or I summon Titanio and I hit into a Raikou and they, they Raikou target my Titanio and we, I negate. It's like we've traded one for one with a Raikou, yay. I don't know, I just, I do not like it. I do not think it is that great. Um, I think you really need Avarice to play it too. You really need ways to get Titanium out of your hand. The only reason I played in KFC is because this synergy with um, with Garden and Mausoleum is so good and because you absolutely need more ways to get Debris Dragon live ASAP. Um, but I'm really just like, I'm, I'm pretty sleeping on this engine right now. I don't think it's that great. Um, Mark of the Rose, this is just like, equip spells i guess is what we want to call it there's like multiple ways you can it's like power tool decks but then also hidden armory in the uh in the amaryllis build sort of technically counts as well and there are like upsides and downsides to both obviously hidden armory works out a lot cleaner for your deck building ratios power tool requires you to play like uh a, a bit of a brickier version and also you have to make power tool but power tool is also a plus but you know hidden armory gets you a free mill obviously stops your normal summon so there's just like a lot of ups and downs that being said mark is really strong but like the other equip spells you play along with mark usually aren't that strong depending on the build and you definitely have to be playing just some like hardcore pure plant thing 
two, I think. Um, trying to throw Mark into the rose into like other shit and force that to work just doesn't really go well. I think you really need a high plant count. I'm gonna put it down here. It's probably maybe above Gallus. I could see above Gallus. I mean, Monster Match just doesn't do anything ever, right? So we can put a I, I, brain control is really good really good effect so maybe like the mark of the rose equip spell stuff belongs above that but i don't think it belongs up in this tier i can't really refer to it as either splashable or strong so yeah that's kind of where we're at <clears throat> next let's move on to rescue cat so rescue cat's interesting it is kind of both if you think about it but maybe it's like it's strong when you resolve it but it's a limited it's like you're playing a bunch of cards to build around this one card that's limited um and like also you might just get bottomless and then it's just like well guess i'm never doing that again uh it just and you might just go the whole game and not draw cat ever this is the thing so maybe we're gonna call it either splashable or strong and you can decide which one it is it's kind of splashable, you know. There's a lot of different Synchro Cat builds. You could play it in Sabres. You could play it in Glads. So it's, like, kind of splashable and kind of strong. It's not definitively either one, now that I can really think about it. But it's not definitively neither one. This, we need to, like, give Cat its own, like, buffer zone. Actually, hold on. Let's add a tier. Uh, add row below. Um, how do I... We got to rename this. Whoops, that's the wrong tier. What have I done? There we go. IDK. And let's change the color. Let's make it... Um, what color should we make? Let's make it that color. All right. Cat, you're going in here. I can't... I, I literally cannot decide, actually. Maybe I should put Krabons there, too. Hmm. We'll leave Krabons in here for now. I actually, like... I'm super indecisive about these two. Maybe I'll move them later. Maybe I won't uh raiko so this is like raiko plus hamster plus maybe charge of the light brigade um probably charge of the light brigade i think not playing that card is a mistake so these cards just give you a bunch of generic ways to plus and pop things they deal with problems they net you advantage they let you mill a bunch um so I, they're going up here i mean yeah they're just so incredibly splashable there's like a million decks that can play them and they're really strong they just like generics outs to anything like free pluses out out the butt so i mean i think raiko hamster stuff definitely should be up here they're they're pretty like pretty iconic edison format cards for a good reason so yeah s tier s tier splashable and strong uh for sure all right speed warrior <laughs> Now, a lot of you probably don't even know what I'm talking about here, um, but this is uh, obviously one of the more meme picks on here of playing Speed Warrior plus Reinforced Truth. <laughs> God, it's so silly. It's so silly. Um, yeah, I mean, just awful. What can I say? It's, it's just, like, so much worse than other stuff, so... <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how... Some weird stuff worked its way in here because I, like, was super selective about what I considered to be an engine and what I didn't. So I was kind of running out of entries, and that's kind of why Speed Warrior and, and whatnot is on here. Uh, so yeah, Gear Town. Hmm. Man, am I, am I going to have to enter another one into the IDK tier? Hold on, we have to get rid of the IDK tier before this is done. It's, like, pretty cringe having it here. But well, let's think about it. It's, like, semi-splashable. There's a lot. It's, it's definitely splashable. I mean... There's a lot of different field spells out there, a lot of different decks that can maybe use different field spells. And in those types of decks, you're going to play triple terraforming with Gear Town, and um, yeah, it just kind of works out a lot. So it's definitely splashable. In terms of its strength, maybe it's definitely not like here. You know, I kind of feel that way about Cat, actually. Just like, if it weren't limited, maybe it would be, but a cat's kind of the same way so okay let's let's work on clearing out this idk tier i think they both belong up here as in like splashable but maybe not at that strong they're not like zero in either category but i think they're kind of in that range <coughs> okay uh future fusion this represents like the hero engine i guess you could call it of just like stratos plus some arbitrary amount of semi-generic goodish heroes plus future fusion plus rota or something 
So, you know, you, you might be thinking of, like, Joshua Schmidt's quick draw build or just, like, Diva Hero playing Stratos, Mali, Prodigy, Future Fusion, etc. Just, like, that kind of stuff. Not, not, not like, full, full committing to the hero strategy of, like, Hero Beat. Just, like, some amount of hero cards so you can play Future Fusion and whatnot. Um, and maybe Malicious, etc., uh, etc. Et so, I think very splashable and very strong, actually. I mean... Future Fusion is crazy when you draw it. Stratos is just a plus one when you draw it. Mali lets you do cool synchro plays and whatnot. I mean, Prodigy and stuff can provide utility. Even just like stuff like Ocean or uh, Alias can give you random like searchable beaters or whatever. So I, yeah, I think the Hero Engine is definitely one of the strongest ones out there right now. Um, probably well, I I've been sorting these within tiers, right? So we got to kind of figure out where stuff goes. I think Raiko Hamster Caius above that, above that, maybe. Does that seem fair? Diva's really strong, though. Maybe Diva needs to be number one still, actually. Maybe, maybe I had it right. And then down here, I really want to have this patience high, man. I really do. Um, Vayu should probably be pretty high just because how crazy powerful it is. And then, like, maybe Gear Town above Cat. And then Plants are, like, the worst one in this tier. I can kind of see that. Have I clarified my thoughts on Krebons at all in this past five minutes or whatever? I don't know. Krebons is like... It's it's definitely just not on this level, right? Like, it's strong-ish. It's splashable-ish. Maybe I should have made that its own tier. <laughs> just like, kind of both. And then I can... You know what? Yeah, wait, 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 wait. I got it. I found the solution to all our problems, okay? We make a new tier that's like... Or no, 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 no. We switch these around. These go up here. This can be, like, just broken. And then this one can be splashable and strong. Um, so honestly, let's move, like, these three up here or something. And maybe not cat. Certainly these two, though, I think are pretty solid. And then, like, Well can go up there, and then we can get rid of this stupid IDK tier. How's that look? I don't know. I'm, like, editing this thing halfway through. <laughs> uh, we gotta change the color of the just broken tier, too. What do we want to make that? Um, I don't know, like, purple. There we go. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Um, so, yeah. I think I think this is a little bit more reasonable. Does, does Gear Town belong this high? Maybe it's not good enough. I don't know. It's like... Is Gear Town better than Cat? Eh. Maybe not. It's like more consistent than Cat. But it's like relatively weaker. So maybe it's more on the level. So maybe we just look at, say like this. Like Gear Town, not that strong. Kind of mid in terms of strength. But very splashable. Alright, I could, I could see that. Uh, Descendant, Descendant just kind of sucks. I mean... I guess you can play this in a good few different things, mostly in, like, kind of bad decks, like Cat, wow, or, uh, or Flambelle, um, but, like, it's just, it, it, you have to play this stupid brick in your deck, and you have to play Spies, it's just, like, whatever. So, semi-splashable, but pretty bad is where, I, where I'm, th not, not even really that splashable, actually, if you think about it. Most modern decks can't really play this card, so I think neither, neither is kind of where I'm, I'm thinking for it. Uh, Karibo, just plain awful. I mean, I think that's pretty clear. Belongs down here with Speed Warrior, frankly. Uh, Machina. This one is probably gonna go in this tier, right? Um, and I think some people might be surprised that I considered this one, because, like, isn't Machina just its own deck? But there's, like, a lot of different things you can kind of just throw Machina Fortress into. I think maybe they're not all that great, but there are a lot, and they're not that bad either, and the engine's just so strong... So, I feel like it could definitely belong up here um, in Splashable and Strong. Like, just like any machine deck, you just play this stuff, and it's like, wow, my deck just got better because the Machina engine is there. I mean, no one would question that it's insanely strong, right? I mean, because it's got this, like, Stratos that's really good, and the Fortress is a good boss monster. Um, so, yeah, I think reasonably up here is fine for it. Um, yeah. Moja... <laughs> I'm actually going to put this... Uh, how do I feel about it? It's kind of just awful, right? But it's not as bad as these. 
do I cope and put it in the yellow tier? What would be my like rationale for doing that? <laughs> it's like, it's definitely not that splashable or strong. Yeah, you know what? We, we can put it in the yellow tier because it is neither splashable nor strong, but I think it's just arbitrarily better than these two <laughs> piece of garbage ones. I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. We can like spare Moja the bottom tier. I don't know. Say I'm coping. I have an attachment to this this deck. I love the little boy. He's he's so cute. Okay, volcanic. Mm, this is not really splashable, right? It's pretty much only played like seriously in one deck, which is just quick draw, and like you can play like some garbage pure volcanic thing, I guess. So. But it is pretty strong because, like, it just has a bunch of yep one pieces of card advantage. It provides you with Blaze Accelerator to generically out things. So I think uh, the orange tier is probably about where it belongs. Do I want to put it above Cat? <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, how about between Cat and Plant? I, d I do just hate Lone Fire Titania with a passion, so I'm going to put it above the Plant one. All right, finally, we, we arrive at the last entry on the list, which is the Genex Undyne engine. Now, I'm not sure why no one plays this, because it's really good. I mean, you can just send, like, Fishborg, send Treeborn, send whatever appropriate water monster you want. Get a plus one. It's kind of like a Stratos. Just adds that uh, controller to your hand, you know? Free plus one. You can use that with a lore or something. I feel like more water decks need to, like, start incorporating this uh, these cards, because they're, they're quite good. I'm going to put them, hmm, probably both splashable and uh, just broken, just broken. The Genex engine is crazy. I don't know why people aren't on it. Um, people really need to get woke on the Genex engine, guys. I mean, start playing this in your, your frog decks. Maybe it'll even make the fish deck have a comeback. Who knows? All right, anyway, that's going to wrap up my thoughts on all of these various engines. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I'll see you next time. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Furthermore, if you enjoy my content, you should think about becoming a channel member. You get access to tons of bonus content, and it's a great way to help support the channel.